Thank you for joining us today on VoicesAcademy.com. Our program is uh, a conversation about a particular case study involving a malpractice suit uh, related to interpreting. We have with us today Gail Pricewise, and um, she's going to be talking to us about a book that she's written about this particular case study. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. Now, Gail, you are in the health profession. You have a master's in public health from Harvard. Yes. Um, now, how did that lead you to have an interest in cultural competency? Yeah. Well, I've always been interested in how race and ethnicity affects health outcomes. Mm -hmm. As a public health professional, um, it's all about whether the patient is, is healthy or not healthy for me. Mm -hmm. It's all about the health outcome. Mm -hmm. And for, um, for years, I've always been interested in um, patients from different cultural backgrounds. I've done a lot of traveling. I've always been sympathetic to people from different cultural backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, my grandma and my, all my grandparents are immigrants. Mm -hmm. um, so I heard about this case of Willie Ramirez. It's a very high profile mal malpractice case that mm -hmm. was caused at least in part by an interpreting error. Mm -hmm. And um, it's often cited in the literature about interpreting and how interpreters are essential for ensuring good health outcomes. Mm -hmm. So essentially what happened was in 1980, um, a young man was brought to an emergency room at 1 a.m. In, 1 a.m. in the morning, mm -hmm. and he was unconscious. And he was brought um, by the ambulance and the family it tried very hard to explain that the patient was intoxicado. Mm -hmm. And intoxicado in Spanish does not mean intoxicated, mm -hmm. at least in Cuban Spanish. It's what we would call a false cognate. It, it sounds like it should mean the same thing, but it really doesn't. Exactly. It's a false cognate. That's right. Mm -hmm. It sounds like they're saying he was intoxicated. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, one of the family members anglicized it. And she actually used the word in English, intoxicated. Mm -hmm. So they were alternately using the word intoxicado and intoxicated. So you can see how it is that the medical professionals became confused. And what did they really mean to say? Well, it's kind of a funny story in that that afternoon, Willie had had a hamburger, a fast food hamburger from Wendy's. And this very conservative Cuban family thought that when he fell down unconscious, it was because he had eaten a fast food hamburger. See, mm -hmm. that's what happens when you eat out of, out of our house <laughs> right. and you go to a fast food place, you fall down unconscious. I mean, it's actually kind of comical. Mm -hmm. They thought he was food poisoned and that mm -hmm. caused him to fall down unconscious. Mm -hmm. So they were, in saying that he was intoxicado, intoxicado means food poisoned, or in, it actually means that you are sick because of something that was toxic to your system. Mm -hmm. So that's what they were trying to explain. Mm -hmm. Now, the emergency room physician looked at an unconscious Hispanic male, of an 18-year-old unconscious Hispanic male, with a family that was explaining that he was what they thought what the emergency room physician thought was intoxicated. Mm -hmm. So of course, for him it made sense that this patient was, and was it had taken a drug overdose. Mm -hmm. The other part of the story was that um, Willie's girlfriend was 15 at the time, mm -hmm. and she mentioned in passing that she and Willie had been arguing that day. So the emergency room physician put together a story that was completely false. Essentially, he thought that because of the argument that Willie had had with his girlfriend, mm -hmm. that he had taken an intentional drug overdose. Mm -hmm. And the diagnosis that he put on the emergency room form was probable intentional drug overdose.